The Life and Times of Anthony Fantano by Daniel R. To tell the life story of Anthony Fantano, one must begin with an account of his critically acclaimed debut. The product of a one-time collaboration between Joni Mitchell and Lou Reed, his birth recorded on Analog and reissued in 2009 via Jag Jaguar, would achieve classic status among Portland natives within days of his release. Becoming an overnight sensation, Fantano's meteoric rise to stardom within the natal music scene more hindered his growth than nurtured it. Subsequent releases such as Annie Learns to Tie His Shoegaze Influences, Noited at Nine Years, and the famous live album Fantano at Folsom Daycare, failed to achieve the same level of success. Reeling from a series of musical disappointments and a life-threatening Weird Al addiction, Anthony entered Polka Rehab at the early age of 11. During a meeting of Accordion Aficionados Anonymous, he would meet his longtime companion, Cal Chichesta, whose life had been hysterically devastated after the release of UHF. Unbeknownst to the majority of the public, Cal Chichesta was once not only Fantano's closest confidant, but also his rival. The two could often be found locked deep in conflict, testing each other's capacity to withstand emerging drone and noise acts. Their contention reached a bitter climax when Fantano dared Chuchesta to sit through a Sun live set without earplugs, though he barely survived after 16 intense hours in the operating room listening to soundtracks for the blind and heart work, Cal Chuchesta's opinion glands were still devastatingly withered. After that day, Cal would never be able to conjure a single coherent thought relating to music. Struck with deep pangs of guilt, Fantano took Chuchesta under his care and serves as his roommate and personal sweater designer to this day. Though his naive, nonsensical observations have become somewhat shrill and idiotic to Anthony over the years, Fantano still shows reserves of care toward his old friend, albeit affections laced with ambivalent tolerance of Chuchesta's love of all things Rebecca Black. Returning from his musical hiatus, Fantano began his blog The Needle Drop in 2000. This resulted in widespread outrage from a number of his old fans, who labeled him a sellout and a chia pet fedora-wearing scrub lord, among other things. <laughs> the cries of his harshest critics were quickly silenced when Fantano released Slipknot Track Review on December 16th, 2009, a definitive forward-thinking masterpiece of surrealist criticism that Adult Swim wouldn't have been able to conceive of in their heyday of rich experimentalism. The accolades began began to resurge for Anthony once again, with many considering Slipknot Track Review a pinnacle staple in his career. In 2010, Fanny won the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Music Nerd in an animated series out of sheer respect, in spite of his ineligibility and the non-existence of the category beforehand. He also received the Pulitzer Prize in Crocheting for his controversial coverage of the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and Weekend Trilogy riots that ensued <laughs> that ensued over for his subsequent reviews of those projects. Though his career as the needle drop continued to astound and impress his peers, in 2014 an incident threatened to derail his fame and possibly destroy the world. At South by Southwest, Fantano ran into his lifelong idol, Stefan Burnett of MXLPA. <laughs> LPX and Death Grips, a less commonly associated act. The two engaged in lively conversation, finding each other to be kindred spirits. Soon after, the two were tragically interrupted by Michael Jira of Swans. He lunged at Burnett, wielding an Irish shara, crying, There can be only one ten. An epic battle <laughs> ensued. The music festival was trapped in chaotic warfare for days. Sun Kill Moon and the Nines formed a temporary allegiance with the war on drugs and the Sevens. Daft Punks of the Eights famously betrayed their armistice with the Fours to gain power over the Sixties. Oh, excuse me. To gain power over the Sixes' brief reign, the battle reached a climactic scene as MC Ride and Chira bellowed their trademark howls at each other in an immense surge of power that collided and caused a massive explosion, wiping out most of the headliners that were completely overshadowed by the battle at hand. Stefan emerged from the rubble having subdued Jira, fatally wounded. As Anthony held the dying MC in his arms, Burnett whispered, "'It gets so fucking dark in here.'" Don't come come apart in here, Fantano cried. If you die in the process, <laughs> I 
might die in the process. Ride, Ride smiled and, and comforted Anthony with a soft spoken and abrasive fuck. I said, fucker, don't start shit. As he released his final breath, Spread Eagle crossed the festival grounds. Fantano cried out to the heavens in agony. Death Grips was no more. The balance of power now in check. Fantano returned home, more or less unfazed by the whole event. <laughs> he would later give the concert a light to decent six, his consensus reading, where the climax was emotionally satisfying, I admired the ambition on display, the majority of the midsection of the battle was too lo-fi and repetitive for my tastes, and the whole thing reeked of a hurried production to accommodate uh, South by Southwest fan demands. Today, Fantano's career has settled into a steady groove. His fan base grows ever larger with the creation of the Church of ASAP Ferg, of which Fantano is a recurring Pew speaker. He lives with his wife, Annie Clark, and his seven children, Mick, Michael, Michelle with two L's, Michelle with one L, Michael Jr., Travis, and Anthony Jr., his oldest daughter. 